Let's go. It's time for the Lady Charmaine's Gospel Minute, keeping you up to date on all your favorite celebrities in the gospel music industry. From tour dates, CD releases, and all your favorite gospel television shows, it's not Hollywood gossip. It's the Gospel Minute with Lady Charmaine. Well, my guest today is a young man who has been bringing us great gospel music from behind the scenes. His songs has encouraged us to cry for help and to cry our last year. As God has moved him from behind the scenes to the forefront, he has taken the gospel music industry by storm. He has topped the Billboard and Radio radio Music charts for months. And his song, Nobody Greater, has become the new church anthem all over the country. Help me welcome the triumphant singer and songwriter, Mr. Vashon Mitchell, to the show. <laughs> hey, Lady Charmaine, how are you? Good, how you doing, Vashon? And welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm glad to be here. I, I, I almost didn't know what you were talking about, so I was like, oh, is this, is this me? <laughs> <laughs> so you've been doing big things for a long time, and now look at you. A lot of people don't know um, yeah. you, your uh, behind-the-scenes work, but they're going to find out today. Some people think you just exploded on the scene a year ago, but they don't know you've been around for a while. Yeah, yeah, I've been working for, since the early 90s. I think I'm getting old a little bit. Yeah, uh, the early 90s is getting old, then I must be really <laughs> old. <laughs> Now, quick question for you, Vashon. Now, for nearly a decade, you had been the music minister for Bishop Larry Trotter of the Sweet Holy Spirit Church there in Chicago. And you were also the youngest minister of music in the church's history. Now, how were you chosen for this position? You know what? I was the choir director uh, at the church and uh, just working alongside the minister of music. And then the minister of music kind of transitioned to another church. And uh, Bishop Trotter came and asked, can I run the music department? And I was about 20 years old. I said, uh, yeah. And uh, I didn't know what I was doing, so it was, it was like, you know, really, really a great opportunity. But um, it was good because God connected me with great, great mentors like uh, Byron Cage and uh, Donald Lawrence and, you know, Lonnie Hunter, who kind of helped uh, me in my transition from just being a choir director to a minister of music. Now, what is the difference between a choir director and a minister of music? Well, you know, uh, minister of music kind of wears a whole bunch of hats. Pretty, uh, I, I call it uh, kind of minister of music has to kind of, pastor the music department uh, alongside the vision of the of the uh, pastor of the house. So mm. Mr. Rizik is, is, uh, has the, the uh, ability to kind of put the legs to the vision of the pastor musically. Uh, choir director kind of just directs the choir, uh, you know, uh, teaches sometimes and things that sort, but the minister music responsibility is, is a lot broader, especially with our churches today, because you not, on, not only have one service anymore, you have multiple services, mm-hmm. multiple praise team, multiple choirs, musicians to supervise. And it's, a, it's a big task uh, to keep it all in line, you know, and to make sure that the sound of the house is right so that someone can be, you know, saved, set free, and delivered, you know, when you uh, minister on Sundays. Now, that's good. I'm glad you explained that really well. Now, you have written songs for such artists as Vanessa Bell Armstrong, Smokey Norfo, and even Bishop Paul Morton, which is one of my favorite songs, Cry My Last Tear. When did you start writing music? I started writing music uh, in high school, uh, which the first song I ever wrote uh, was Only a Test, I think. Uh, it was recorded by Sweet Holy Spirit first, and then GMWA recorded it again. Um, I found out, you know, at a young age, being around, you know, from Chicago, so being around just great gospel music from Albertina Walker to Dr. Charles Hayes to the Thompson Community Singers, that I had a love and a passion for writing writing songs um, that were that were uh, gospel songs. And uh, so I started at a young age and just over the years kind of matured that writing um, to where it is today. Now, you wrote This Is Only a Test. Yeah. That song used to minister to me because you have to remember this is only a test because sometimes when you're going through some things, you don't realize God is testing you. And I'm sure other people can testify right about now to say, oh, my goodness, he wrote that song. So, oh, OK, well, we're going to get in a little more of your uh, of your music writing as well. Now, how do artists find you? You know, they say, OK, Vashon Mitchell is a is a great writer. How did they find you? Well, you know, what? I grew up in the 90s, um, which is funny. Uh, we we think like it's so long ago, but I grew up in the 90s where. Uh, it was easier than it is now. Uh, so I w- you know, I wrote songs for my local church choir, Sweet Holy Spirit, songs like Only a Test, My Worship is For Real, um, you know, Trouble Don't Last Always, and those songs. And I never knew those songs would kind of be sang around the world. So when other churches start singing it, other artists start recognizing that I wrote them, they actually contacted me. They were like, hey, Michelle, can you write something for us? Or, 
you know, or I'll meet a producer like Donald Lawrence or, uh, you know, or someone else will be like, I need a song for Vanessa. Do you have one? I was like, uh, yeah. You know, I was one of those, I didn't know, you know, at, at that time, I didn't know the gift that God gave me. So over the years, that's how it started for me. Now I actually write songs with artists in mind. So did you, which Trouble Don't Last Always did you write? Which of uh, I have a message just for you. It said his word, I know it's true. Go ahead, Michelle. You, you could have kept on going. You could have kept on going. I wasn't going to stop you. Know that one. <laughs> I was going to let you keep singing. <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> That's why I didn't say anything. I wasn't gonna say, Yeah, I know that one. You can keep on singing. That's an exclusive on Lady Charmaine La <laughs> You could have kept on going, I'm sorry. Okay. Now a question for you. Now you're a worshiper. Now we can all see your relationship with the Lord. Um, did you ever see yourself becoming an artist as well? You know what I did. Um it was it, it was the point to where uh my music I begin to take on a different faith. You know how we write songs and, you know, it, it bless our local body or our family or our church. And, uh, you know, when that music leaves your church and starts to travel around the world and people are blessed by the music, it kind of opens up that door to say, you know what, I can do this. I can go, I can travel. I can, I can become the artist that spread the gospel of Jesus, you know, because my music is bigger than my local body. So I, I saw it, um, but it wasn't my turn yet. But it was, I saw it like years ago, and I started preparing for what's, what's happening now. Now, how did you start preparing for what's happening now once you had received your vision? How did you start preparing? Well, you know what? I believe uh, in connecting myself with someone or people, not even one person, because I have a lot of great artists that I've connected with um, who were uh, either where I wanted to be or going where I wanted to go. Mm. So I connected myself with great artists like, you know, Bishop Walker and, like I said, Byron Cage. And, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Um, but that, to learn from them, though, not to not to kind of, you know, ask them to put me on or can I open up for y'all? No, no, no. I just wasn't want to be around and learn from, from their path and to see, you know, what worked, what didn't work. And also, I wanted to personally educate myself and learn all I can about uh, publishing and songwriting and writer splits. And, you know, it's a lot more to the industry than just getting up, taking a mic to sing. So throughout that process, I just became a sponge, you know, an artist sponge, but also someone who wanted to know what it took to write a song and, you know, what the splits are in publishing and and things of that sort. I want to know more and more about what I wanted to do um, before, you know, I kind of dived in all the way. That's good. You learned the background, especially about your money. (laughs) Because <laughs> a lot of times Absolutely. we go into this business, but we really we want the money, but we don't know how to get the money or how to be business savvy. So it looked like you really did your homework to know what you were getting into, not just from the the ministry side of it, but the the money side of it, the financial aspect. Because you know, yeah, ministry- absolutely. I, I made mistakes before. This is not my first record deal. I signed a deal years ago, and I didn't know as much as I know now. So this deal is a lot different. Um, it is a partnership between myself and EMI. Uh, I own the masters. Mm. Um, you know, I, you know, it's a different deal because I kind of, you know, put myself in a place to where I wanted to learn more. I wanted to do more and I wanted to be, uh, that businessman that had, you know, had his hands in, in everything. Right. <laughs> so, uh, that's where I am now. That's good. Now, what is your strategy for recording great music? Do you have a strategy? I know prayer, the power of prayer. Yeah, prayer, keeping God first, and actually, um, I asked God a long time ago to allow me to write and sing songs that will live longer than I can, Mm. and in doing that, I try to put myself in a place to where I hear the sound for the generation, you know, um, I I believe, you know, if I write it or if someone else writes it, as long as it's the sound for what's happening, you know, like right now, I believe the song Nobody Greater is resonating around the world because we're in a world where people are losing jobs and losing homes and, you know, going through and they, and, and they didn't realize that, you know what, these are only resources. God is our source. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, that's why Nobody Great is such a, such a huge sound right now. But, um, you know, I think that the, the success of, of music and music ministry for me is just tapping into that place that speaks to um, music has life and gospel music really has life and carries life. So just tapping into that sound that does that. Thank you. So if you're just tuning in, we're talking to Mr. Vashon Mitchell. We're talking about his new tri- project entitled Triumphant, giving us a little background on about what is his strategy behind recording great music. Now, Vashon, tell us about your um, album Triumphant and the inspiration behind it. Triumphant is 
I believe, uh, was was my baby. It was like birth um, early two thousand eight. I wanted to do I wanted to do a project that will kind of speak to the world. Uh, so from beginning to end, uh, it is a project that points people to God. It inspires. It encourages, and it uplifts the body of Christ and people outside of the body as well. So from songs like "Chasing After You" and "Nobody Greater" and um, you know, his blood still works. And all, all these songs are a compilation of work that will not only inspire, uplift, and encourage the listener, but it, at the end of the CD, it will point you to Christ. So that's what this project mm-hmm. is doing. Um, and that's why I believe that it has, has the success it had, because it is not, you know, there's no other intent for it but to point a body to Christ. Now, Vashon, I've interviewed a lot of people, but that was the first time I heard anyone say at the end of the project, you wanted it to point to the Lord Jesus Christ. That was a powerful statement. Now you said something else powerful to me when we were on the BT celebration, the gospel red carpet. And that's when I told you, Oh, you got to be on the show because when I had asked you, um, well, what do you attribute to success? And when you said waiting your turn to me, that was such a profound uh, statement for somebody to make. What does waiting your turn mean to you? Well, you know, a lot of uh, people, especially in, in church, um, you know, you get a word over you or you, you, you know that it's time for something. You know, I can sing, so it's time for me to sing. Or someone says, I'm supposed to record, so it's time to record. Um, but it's not always your turn. It's almost like when you're in college. When I was in college, it was time to eat. <laughs> but I couldn't eat until my turn came up for me to get past the register. That's good. But when you look, when you look back behind you, it was enough food for everyone behind you as well. Mm-hmm. So if you use your time to prepare for your turn, then it'll make your turn easier. You know, and I run into a lot of people saying, oh, man, how can I get on? Or I, I want to sing, I want to write, but I can't get on. But they're not learning about it. They just want to get on. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to use that time to kind of prepare for your turn in order to make your turn easier. When you wait on your turn, you know that you put the work in. You educated yourself. You you know that your turn uh, you, you're ready for it. Um, I got that from listening to uh, Marvin Sapp. When he received an award a few years back, um, I will never forget. He said, I'm glad God did this for me when I was ready. And I would never, that was the most profound statement that kind of helped me kind of prepare myself mentally for getting ready for what God was going to do for me. That, that was a nugget right there, because I can imagine when you said it's time to eat. And I remember when I was in college, when it was time to eat, you go into the cafeteria and everybody's standing in line, but it's not your turn to eat. It's time, though. So now you're waiting and you're preparing for your turn. Mm-hmm. You grab your knife, your fork, you get your tray, you get your plate, but it's still not your mm-hmm. turn yet, but you're prepared. Oh, that was so good, Vashon. Okay. <laughs> now you have a new <laughs> single. I'm sorry. Now you have a new single out called Chasing After You. Now, was this song written to motivate other people, or was this your personal testimony of you chasing after the Lord? You know what? It was written by Devon Murphy, who was William Murphy's brother. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was first recorded uh, by Full Gospel, because I'm a Full Gospel baby, born and raised. And it was recorded by the Full Gospel Mass Choir, and I love the song so much because I believe that, you know, we we are in pursuit of a lot of things, but how many people are really pursuing God? Mm-hmm. And uh, in this season, you know, I, I have to always go back to, you know, we can't focus on, on, on a car note. We can't focus on, you know, bread becomes $10 a loaf. Because we serve God, we're going to still eat bread. You know, so we have to chase after our souls. We have to chase after that God that we serve. Um, you know, so that's where the song comes from for me. You know, but I think it has a different definition for everyone. But for me personally, it's one of those songs that, you know, I'm chasing after God no matter what I go through, no matter what I see. And I'm praising my way through it instead of crying. I'm praising my way through it instead of, instead of you know, uh, pouting and, and, and complaining. I'm praising my way to the next level, to the next place. That's good. So just chasing after the Lord instead of looking at everything else that's around you. Now, I know you're on tour right now with Mary Mary and BB and CC Winans, the Still Something Big Tour. What a great opportunity for you. Um, so how has this tour been for you so far? Let me tell you, well, the, well, the tour is on hiatus now. Uh, we're supposed to be going back out this summer. But when I tell you, um, and, and everyone asks me, how was the tour? How was the tour? How is it to open up for Mary Mary and BB and CC? I think it was one of the best opportunities ever afforded to me. But what was most important was what I learned being on tour with two pioneers in the gospel industry. And, you know, um, you know, I, 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 I kind of, you know, 
took it as a learning experience to sit on, I not only opened up, but I sat on the side and I watched and, and um, enjoyed Mary Mary's ministry each night. I enjoyed BBNCC Winers. And it's amazing how BBNCC Winers and everyone kind of took me under their wings and I became a student of theirs and not only someone who just opened up and went and sat down, but I became like a student and I learned from, you know, such gospel great. And uh, that was education you can for. Uh, and it was just a job put me in the right place at the right time. But Sean, I apologize. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I so apologize. That went straight through the board. Okay, now we're gonna go back over that question again. So uh, what okay. what did you learn? Because I, I thank God I'm pre recording so I can cut that out. Okay. okay. I'm gonna do a clean start. And you <laughs> said so it was so <laughs> it was so important on what you learned. Okay, what did you learn? Uh well where we stop it? I'm not I'm not sure. Okay, well, we're going to do that one more time. I totally apologize. Okay. okay. Now, I have a question for you, Vashon. You were just recently uh-huh. on tour with BB and CC Winans and Mary Mary on the Steal Something Big Tour. So can you tell us about your experience on being on this tour? Let me tell you, it was the greatest experience of my life. You know, you can you cannot ask for a better tour to open up for with Mary Mary and gospel legends, BB and CC Winans. Um, you know, the winers are like the family of gospel. Uh, but uh, I enjoyed opening it each night and, and being a part of the tour. But what was most important to me was what I learned on tour just from pioneers of gospel and how B.B. Winers took me under his wings as a student and C.C. Winers would talk to me in the e- uh, every evening and just give me advice and guidance and encouragement. And Mary Mary would say the same thing and kind of just, you know, it was it was the most inspiring and encouraging experience uh, a gospel artist could have that you really can't pay for. Some knowledge you just get just from, from the experience, and I, I was able to experience that. Now, what kind of things did you learn? What did they sit you down and teach you, especially from these pioneers? Can you share a couple of a nuggets <laughs> they gave you? Oh, yeah, I'm being nosy now. What did they teach well, you? I can't, I can't tell you <laughs> everything. Just give me about one or two, no. just one or two simple ones. Well, you know, uh, well, I just, I'll just say this. You know, I can't tell you exactly, um, but I'll say this. You know, uh, born and raised in church and singing gospel music, you know, a lot of times we don't know how to transition from Sunday morning to the Airy Crown or Chicago Theater or to Madison Square Garden. And uh, one thing I learned was, you know, if I'm coming to Madison Square Garden, let me enjoy you. You know, you don't have to pump and prime me to enjoy you. Let me enjoy you. Let me feel the spirit behind what you're doing. You know, you know, we learn in church, oh, come on, stand up, clap your hands, mm-hmm. do this, do this. <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if I buy a hundred dollars ticket to Madison Square Garden, I want to enjoy your ministry. Mm-hmm. You know, if I want to clap, let me clap. You know, if I want to stand up, let me stand up. Don't ask me. Uh, and I think that was one of the greatest uh, moments in my life to kind of transition from just being, you know, a singer or artist to, like, uh, being able to be an artist who can not only sing in church, but can be called to Madison Square Garden or can be called, you know, to Chicago Theater. Because, you know, just getting into that mindset was one of the greatest experiences as well. So what I'm hearing you say is, you went from really being a minister than having to be a cheerleader. Okay, get on up, clap your hands, jump up two times, just really letting the people just really sit and enjoy the craft that God has blessed you with. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. Now, it, now who do you admire in this industry? I know you grew up, and I know there were some people in the industry, I'm sure, that you admired. Who did you admire and why? Uh, well, everyone knows that I admire Kirk Franklin. Um, I grew up, you know, admiring what he, what, what he, uh, how he paved the way for a new sound and uh, how we can look at gospel. And, you know, I, growing up in Chicago, you know, if you didn't have a, a suit or <laughs> choir robes and all this, then, oh, my God, you wasn't church. But, you know, when Kurt Frenner came out and, you know, they were, they were dressed in jeans and still praising God, you know, it was like a trendsetter for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm a songwriter, so I admire a lot of songwriters, both past and present. Um, so I can go down and listen to Thomas Whitfield, to Andre Krauss, to Donald Lawrence, to Richard Smallwood, you know, uh, Kirk Carr, and, you know, just the list goes on and on. You know, I just, you know, I, I admire anyone who can tap into that sound of God and that can bless, you know, generations for years and years and years. Now, how is it for you to grow up admiring these people and then get a chance to work with them? What is that like for you? <laughs> Let me tell you. Being on tour with BBC and Season One is, you know, every, every, well, everyone should be a wine and sand, but I am. I'm from Chicago. <laughs> it was right down in, in Detroit. We used to drive four hours just to go hear the wine and sing, all of them. 
Um, but to, to, to not only be able to uh, sing on the same platform as CC and BB Wines, but to be able to talk to them and to, to you know, for them to, to encourage me and tell me, you did great, son, or, or it, it put one of those smiles on your face that on the inside you feel like a little kid. And it, you know, I had those moments, you know, on tour, um, especially like CC is like, you know, she's like my, my play mom. So it's like, you know, it was, it was just great. It was great. Um, it's a it's a turning point in my life. It's, it's one of those points that say, "Oh my God, Yolanda knows my name," or Donnie McClurkin, you know, is, is is praying with me and, and inviting me to TBN with him. And you know, these are all people I grew up admiring and respecting. And it kind of you know helps me to know that you know when God said He'll make your name great and put you before great men, He really meant it. So. That's what he's doing. I can see that, especially with this album. It's like Vashon Mitchell's name is going up there with the BBs and the CC Winans, you know, and it's a solid name because, you know, your project is a solid project. And it's like you're deserving of it. It's not like you were overnight success. You know, you kind of remind me of David working behind the scenes and then when when you're ready to become king. And so and then you're you're ready for it. And that's what it reminds me of personally. And how does it feel to know that God is making your name synonymous with all the other artists that you admired you know it, it is it is the greatest feeling in the world to know um my, my great grandmother said a long time ago and it's very simple but it really blessed me she said if man make you man can break you mm-hmm. but if god makes you is it, it, it'll sustain you mm-hmm. and um you know i'll never forget that so it's 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 only um it's only uh right that for god to do what he said he's going to do he's not going to make a promise that he's not able to fulfill so now, lastly, now I know you're, you're now you're a solo artist in the industry. What legacy do you want to leave behind? What do you want your legacy to be? I want people to know um, years after I'm gone that Vashon Mitchell left a legacy of music that they can pull out and it is timeless. Um, people can pull out my worst Mr. for real in, in 3052 and still be blessed or listen to nobody greater and still be uplifted. Um, I, I, I definitely want to be that sound like, like James Cleveland, you know, leave a legacy of music that, that can just live on forever. Because, you know, I remember when I was watching TBN and Donnie McClurkin, I mean, just took off with your song on TBN. What does that make you feel like to know that people you admire on TBN singing your song, <laughs> Holy Ghost hit them and they just take off. And it's like he was preaching through the song. How does that make you feel as an artist, honestly? <laughs> you know, it's a great feeling. You know, it's a great feeling. It's, it's like you, you can't explain it. It's just, it's just like, wow, gosh, you're gonna do all this for real? That's how you're gonna do it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's like that. You know, you don't, you don't have words. You just be like, wow, this is Donnie McClurkin, y'all. Thanks. Yeah, because I mean, when he started singing the words to your song, searched all over, then you, before you knew it, the Holy Ghost hit him. And he was, I was like, okay. And for you to be there at that time, you were backstage, but for the yeah. Lord to hit him like that. And what does that, you know, make you feel like? Now, before we go, I always say, okay, this is the last one. But just like you, what advice would you give a person who is looking at entering into the gospel music industry? You know, I tell everyone this is that learn all you can about what you want to do. The industry is huge. So some people want to write, some people want to sing, some people want to, you know, produce. Learn all you can about what you want to do to make your transition easier and so you can be knowledged in the field that you want to go into. Learn all you can. Now, are you on any social networks like Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, if people want to follow you and see what you're doing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Keep up with Rashawn Mitchell. RashawnMitchell.com. Facebook me, Rashawn Mitchell. Tweet me, Rashawn Mitchell. And don't be asking me to be friend you on Facebook because I got too many. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I have a. <laughs> I reached my max. I didn't know Facebook had a max. So I reached mm-hmm. my max. So I get like thousand messages saying, "Can you connect with me?" But I did do a second page. So y'all hit me up. I answer my home page. I say what's up. And uh, you know that's it. That's me. Well, I want to thank you so much, Vashon, for coming on the show. Awesome interview. You were just awesome today. And ladies and gentlemen, here's Mr. Vashon Mitchell's Chasing After You on Praise 98 FM Jams.